I gotta say thank you to all and everybody who preached over this last three, four weeks. Let's give it up for Set Free. He does an awesome job. Give it up to my son Joshua, who did a great job. Who was the other one? Robbie. Robbie. I know. Oh. Let's give it up for my awesome associate. Let's give it up for the band, both on Tuesdays and Fridays. Yeah. I said we're not supposed to give it up for the drummer. And Deanna. And Deanna. All right, now again, let's give it up for Jesus, amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen? Because I'm not real sure where I'm going with this, and I'm fumbling through my Bible because I want God's will and God's way. Amen? Amen. Precious Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. We thank you, Lord God, that you're such an awesome God. I thank you, Lord God, for all the things that I got to see when I went back to my mom and dad's house and Dee Dee's mom and dad's house this week. I thank you, Lord God, for everything that you're doing in my family on both sides. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that even through the hard times, Lord God, you're there. Even through the difficult times that we seem to struggle with so much, Lord God, you're there. But Lord God, that no matter what's going on around us, Lord God, that you love us, that you care for us. That Lord God, this time of the year can be so depressing for some. And Lord God, I just lift up uh, depression in this house tonight, Lord God. I ask you to touch those people, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're showing me in your word, Lord Jesus. And sometimes it's kind of painful and sometimes it's kind of... Uh, heart-wrenching to know what I'm feeling and what I'm seeing, Lord God. But I would ask, Lord God, for a church, Lord God, that's filled with your spirit and knows and can, can, and can sense what's about to happen in your world, Lord Jesus. And I ask, Lord God, that you would just have your will and your way in this message. And I thank you for every person that's here under the sound of my voice, of my, voice my voice, Lord God. And I give you praise and honor and glory for each, each person that's here, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. I've been thinking an awful lot. I've been thinking about different ways I could start this off. And I've been thinking about saying, go Browns. Oh, yeah. Lions. Oh. Now, the reason I'm going there is you'll understand what I'm saying here in a second. Go Ohio State. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Go Michigan. Oh. Go Cleveland Indians. Go whatever. Go go with your team that you go with. Go, go, go uh, Green Bay. Go Detroit. And I've been thinking about how many times as, as followers of these, <laughs> of these football teams and baseball teams and hockey teams, that when the team starts getting really down and, and messing up really bad, how much we go against them. We don't follow them completely. Some of you as believers that have been around a while are going, well, I know where he's going with this. I'm glad you do. Because I'm not real sure where I'm going with this. But what I'm going with this is basically this. I've been a Browns fan for many, 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 many years. I've never left them. I've never walked away from them. I never picked a winning team. Because trust me, in 20 some odd years, mm -hmm. I've seen us lose and lose and lose and lose again. Amen. <laughs> I've stuck through the days of the cardiac kids. Some of you have no idea what I'm even talking about. Back in the early 80s, there was a group of Browns players who would win always in the last few minutes of the game. And they called them the cardiac kids. And I'm trusting you, if you followed that team at that time, you literally had a heart attack almost every week. <laughs> it ain't over and they wrote songs about it. And they, they uh, I can't, usually I can remember, but for the life of me, I can't think of how it goes right now. But what I'm trying to say is this tonight. God never gives up on you. No matter how bad you are, no matter how bad you smell, no matter how bad you're messing up in life, your God loves you. Amen. And some of you need to hear that tonight. Some of you need to hear how much God loves you. And I've been thinking about all the teams, and some of you guys are in the sound of my voice, have voted for Cleveland as long as I have. I've had people come over to my house, and we're cheering them on, and we want to throw things at the television. And I used to have this brick back in the 80s that was actually made out of styrofoam that I did throw at the television. 
and I used to swear at the television. And I used to get upset so bad at my browns. But again, I want to talk about Jesus tonight and how much he cares for you and how much he'll never give up on you. But the sad part of the story is, even though he loves you, and even though he cares about you, and even though no matter what you do, he still cares for you and still loves you, we have a body of believers today that continue to mess up. We say amen. 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 And I'm getting to the point in my life where I go through this like 10 year itch, I call it, in my, in my Christian walk. And I, as a pastor, I, I start to think of there's either heaven is going to be really, 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 really full because God loves us so much, heaven is just going to be full of all of us because God loves us that much. Or I go to the second part of it where God is just so upset with us because He's shown us everything in here and how to live. That it's our own fault if we don't make it. You follow me so far? So heaven is either really, really, really full and God loves us so much that He stretched out His arms and He died for us and it doesn't matter what we do, it doesn't matter how we go, it doesn't matter... Where we go on Thursday, where we go on Friday, how we live our lives, or God is speaking to each one of us individually and saying, because he's an individual God, you need to stop doing certain things in your walk. God is speaking to some of us, and so for some of us, it's okay to do certain things, and for others of us, it's called obedience, and we're not supposed to continue to go down the same paths we're on. And I sit and I wonder as, as, a, as a pastor... I sit and wonder, what can I do? And the pastors that have been up here over the last few weeks sit and wonder, what can I do to get them to understand that there is a time coming, a reckoning Amen. of sort that's saying, you need to get your lives right. And I sat today in my office and I was like, Lord, I don't really know where we're going with this. And I don't know what I'm supposed to say or what I'm supposed to do. And I looked at these little plaques on the wall that are just made out of paper and, little, and, and glass. And it's up on, my, up on my office wall. And it says that I'm ordained to preach the gospel to World Kinship Ministries. And it has my, my name on there. And it's printed. And it says Robert D. Lamb. And I look at that. And I look at what I am called to do. And I, I am called to share the gospel. And I am called to be the hard hitter and coming at you guys sometimes and saying there's a good possibility <clears throat> listen to me real close there is a good possibility that some of us under the sound of my voice right now will not make the kingdom of heaven <clears throat> Amen. that's the truth the truth is is when I look at that plaque it says that I'm supposed to preach the gospel and I'm supposed to go out and witness to the world about this God who died on a cross and I am supposed to be a disciple of His. I'm supposed to go out to the highways and the byways, to the stinky people, to the three-piece suit people, to the world and preach the gospel. And then I look at the other aspect of it, and I look at the aspect of, but nobody really wants to hear the truth anymore. Nobody really wants to hear the truth of the cross. The truth of the cross says this, that he stretched out his arms and he died for us. Amen. That he shed his blood and he died for us. One pastor this week described it as, nobody really gets the true gospel because if they really got that he, when he stretched out his arms, there was no towel around him. He lost everything. He was butt naked on a cross for us. Amen. Why? <laughs> to prove to us that He loved us. Amen. To prove to us that there is a way where there seems to be no way. When I, look at the, when I look at the Bible and I look at what God asks us to do, it's not only believe, but obey what He says. It's not only believe, but have faith. It's not only believe, but understand His grace. It's not only to believe, but understand that He tells us right in here that there are going to be times that are going to be tough. There are going to be good times where we're at the top of the mountain yelling and screaming Jesus because it's so awesome to be in the kingdom. And then there are going to be the times where you get a phone call from your wife saying, 
It's cancer. Will you still serve God in those times? Because that's the question that's going through my mind today at the end of this 2013 is will you serve God even in the hardest of times? Will you serve your Jesus when it gets tough? I go back and forth again, as I said at the beginning of this message. I go back and forth struggling with the fact of I am going to have friends that I am literally going to be, whether there is such, is such a thing or not, looking down going, why didn't you just get it right when you had the chance? It's cool to scream out on a Friday night and have a great time, isn't it? Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? It's awesome to come in here on a Friday night and wave our hands in the air and act like we just don't care. <laughs> it's great to come in here and be all sold out for Christ because it's easy when you're around other believers. It's awesome when you're serving God and you're jumping around and you're, the lights are blinking on and off and, and, and you're around people that you know are on the same team. But what's it like when you're out there amongst people that are trying to pull you down and get you to the point to do things that you know are not right? Even as a little kid, and go with me on this, when I was five years old, I knew that it was wrong to steal a pack of gum. Way before mommy told me it was wrong. Just something in the back of my head said, this is not right. How many would agree with me on that? So each and every time you go to commit a sin, you can't tell me that that little voice, if you're a believer, we all cheered when we, we were talking about, let's give Jesus some praise, amen. Let's give him some honor. Let's give him some glory. Amen, Jesus. It's awesome. But when the little voice speaks to you and says, that fun is going to pull you straight down and straight back to who you were, we go, I don't care. It's what's going to happen. I don't care what it's going to cost me. I don't care what it's going to cost me. Well, Pastor Bob, this isn't the same message that you started off with and the, and the fun time we were having at the beginning of service. And, and why don't you just shut up because you're really making me think. And, 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 and I want to go do what I want to do. And well. <laughs> but the truth is, we all fall short. Amen. The truth is God loves us, but God is also calling us for righteousness. God is also giving us the tools, the helmet of salvation. God has also given us the tools, the breastplate of righteousness. God has also given us the tools to be able to, to be who we're supposed to be in Jesus. God has given us the tools. Nick talked about, I'm a Christian. And he got us all fired up, and it was an awesome message. And that week I needed to hear that more than anything. It fired me up. It got me excited. It got me excited about who I am. I'm a Christian. Nothing's going to pull me down. Nothing's going to get me away from that. I'm a believer in the, in the cross. I'm a believer in what he did for me. And thank you, Jesus, that I've got a way out when there seems to be no way. Amen. What happened on Saturday? Oh, I'm such a screw-up. I messed up again. At my house, my wife certainly will say amen to most of this. I usually get up on Saturday morning and I mope around the house. Because on Saturday morning, it's like, did I do everything I was supposed to do? Did they get to hear the gospel right? Did I open up the right pages of God's word? Did I challenge them enough? Did I get them to understand that there's a good possibility that they could die this evening and not know where they're going? Did I, 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 did I? And I look at the, the thing on the wall every week and I go, did I do it right that time, Lord? Did I, did I bring somebody to Christ? Why do I do that? Because that's my job. <laughs> and I want to do everything I possibly can for my creator. At the end of the year, I go and I, and I, I just go back and I, I kind of do like an inventory of the year in my own mind. And I think about what we could do different next year. You guys with me tonight, amen? Amen. I think about what we can do to bring people to Jesus. I think about 
who we could have preach, who we could bring in, what bands we could bring in, who we could get to challenge some of you who are normally not into the worship of, of opening up a hammer, or what songs we could do. And Heather calls me and she'll go, what about this song, or what about this song, or what about this, or Nick will go, can I, you know, I'm not really feeling this, 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 Right now, I don't think I'm going to sing tonight. Or whatever's going down in church, we our job is to bring you and to get you excited about who Christ is and what He can do for you and in your lives. To get you excited enough not to go back to your old junk. Not to go back to who you were. Yep. Yes. We do the things of the great banquet where like Chris's went and, and Daniel's went. And, and we, we try to get you guys excited about getting excited about it, about getting excited about it, about getting excited about my Lord of Lords and my King of Kings and, and my Lion of Judah right. and my Dad, who is Jesus Christ. Amen. And I try to get you guys all fired up so that you're not coming in here next week going, oh, I'm in the mully grubs again. My husband upset me. My wife upset me. The car broke down. The dog peed on the carpet. I can't pay my bill. I can't do this. Don't you think pastors have the same problems as you do? Don't you think rappers have the same problems as you do? Don't you think praise and worship leaders have the same problems as you do? Don't you think we get tempted just as much as you do? Don't you think it's hard for us to stay on track just as much as you guys do? Don't you think that it's a struggle for us not to say... The F-bomb that wants to come out of our mouth when things aren't going so good? I'm just being honest. Don't you think it's a struggle that when we walk through this place and we see the things that are going on around us and we watch you guys and how you act and how you interact and who you're ready to fight with or who you're ready to really go to bed with? That we go, what are you doing? Wake up! When I sit and I look at James, I look at the book of James, and I look at the book of Proverbs, and I look at the book of Romans, and I look at the book of Psalms, and I look at all the books that are in the Bible, and there are, these people are exactly like you. I could flip through this book, and I could find Brett in here in some way. <laughs> He's shaking his head yes, so I'm okay to say this. Probably we could find Brett a lot in here. <laughs> but brother, I gotta tell you, you can find Pastor Bob in here a lot too. Amen. So tonight, my challenge is this. The next time you go through a problem that's bigger than you, the next time you go through a problem that you don't understand, the next time you go through something that, that is just mind-blowing that you can't even believe. That because this is how we think. I can't believe God would allow this to happen to me. <laughs> Why would God test me like this? Why would God allow my wife to get cancer? Why would God allow things to happen? Why would God not allow me to have the money to be able to pay this bill? Why? Because now I'm all down and I'm depressed and I don't even want to go to church. <laughs> Now, raise your hand if that's you. Be honest for a second. And if you're not raising your hand at some point in your life, you are lying and it's pride, and then we'll talk about that in here too. Amen. So now, with the real, real other show of hands, that's been me this week, this month, this year. Some point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if the truth be known, Sometimes God tells us that he allows those things to happen to get us to understand that God's in control and we're not. That's right. Yeah. Let's say that again. God allows things to happen in our lives to get us to understand that our Lord Jesus Christ, our God, is in control and we're not. Amen. So let's go to 1 James. I got Bob here. 1 James. Okay. 1 James, please. 1 James. First James, James 1, I mean. First James, I wrote that book. It's brand new. Brett, can you read for me? Greetings from James. This letter is from James, a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am writing to the 12 tribes, Jewish believers scattered abroad. Greetings. Faith and endurance, dear brothers and sisters. 
When troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance amen. to grow. Amen. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. Read that again. Read that again. Please, four, start at four. For you right? know that when your faith is tested, your, inter your endurance has a chance to grow. Amen. So let it grow. Amen. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but Amen. when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Amen. Amen. What's God telling us? Is, is, there, is there stipulations to asking God? No. 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 That means we can ask Him anything, right? Yes. We can get honest with God. We can tell God how we're really feeling. I am really feeling low. I am really feeling down. I need some wisdom, Lord Jesus. I need, I need you to come down and touch this situation. Yep. I need you to touch this friendship. I need you to touch this, this situation with my bills, with my husband, with the pee on the carpet from the dog, with the car <laughs> payment. I need you to give me an opportunity, Lord God, to be able to worship you and understand who you are. Amen. But no, that's not how it works. This is how it works. Why did that happen? <laughs> that's Did really I get you? Wow. I tried. I did. <laughs> Isn't that how we normally do it? Amen? I'm frustrated. I'm mad. I'm irritated. Why, God? Yeah. I'm being honest with you with the message at the end of the year trying to tell you guys that's normally how we react. Yep. Let's go on. Amen. First, first James. <laughs> <laughs> you need another water bottle? Do not, not waver, water. for a person with divine loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. Believers? That's none of us, though, right? No. None of us, right? No, it wouldn't be. I'm in the wrong church. I don't even know why I pulled this scripture up. <laughs> Believers who are poor have something to boast about, for God has honored them. And those who are rich should boast that God has humbled them. They will fade away like a little flower in the field. The hot sun rises and the grass withers. The little flower droops and falls, and its beauty fades away. In the same way, the rich will fade away with all of their achievements. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love Him. Those who what? Love, love him. him. Love him through what? All Everything. Everything. All Everything. All love him through the good times, the bad times, the the, the boring times, <laughs> the, the dry times, the roller coaster at the bottom. You know, the, in the valley. Where are you, God? I'm gonna throw another water if I had one. I would. I would teach you guys this time. In the lowest of low, God is saying to call out to Him. Call unto me, and I will things. That's why I play drums. Oh, where your day job? Let's move on. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say. God is tempting me. Nope. No. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. <laughs> Temptation comes from our own desires, Amen. which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when his sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. Wow. It gives birth to what? Death. death. Whose fault is it? The devil made me do it, right? No. no. Whose fault is it? Our own desires. Whose desires pull us away from God? I don't know. Isn't that what that says? And remember. Brett, go from and remember again, please. I'm sorry. You were doing so good, too. Yeah. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires. Our own desires. Amen. Which entice us and drag us away. 
These desires give birth to sinful action, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. Yep. Yep. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect comes down from us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. Amen. I'm, I don't know about you guys, but that's something we all should be living by, amen? Amen. amen. I'm, thinking, I'm thinking about getting it all tattooed on my back, and then we'll just take a mirror and read it every day. <laughs> that tells us right there what we're supposed to be doing, how we're supposed to be acting, how we're supposed to be living our lives. If we're not, if we're not giving God our all, if we're not saying, hey, God, I need James one. One. Yes. I was oh, thinking yes. I, did, I, was, I had it mixed up, sorry. <laughs> did I have James 1, and I understand that I am making this for myself. I am making this difficult for myself. I am causing this. The devil's not causing it. I'm going to tell you something. If Christianity gets wrong, when, if we think about this for a second, if that's what that word says, then the devil's not sitting on your shoulder all the time. The devil's not sitting there whispering in your ear all the time. And if he is, he's whispering a small word, and you're running with it. Yes. Think about that for a second. Hey. The cold beer sounds really good. You drink the one beer, and then you're on your 13th, and you're going, why did I drink those 13 beers? <laughs> <laughs> and then you're involved in all kinds of other stuff that you know is wrong that you shouldn't be doing and you're going well it's too late now and then the devil's whispering in your ear again well you already did it you might as well go all the way you might as well go and do some other stuff that you know is wrong and then you get up the next morning and you're feeling like why did I do all of that why did I mess up that bad the devil didn't do all those things you did all of those things. You were tempted and you ran with it. Your desires. The other description that I had is out of James 2. Can we put that one up? This is the one that I have used probably more in my Christian walk. And I, was, I asked Robbie this week, I'm like, you know... I don't want to use this again. They're going to think I'm just going over and over and over the same thing. Well, maybe the broken record needs to sink this time. James 1. James 2. James <laughs> what is it, 7 through 9? Yeah. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Yeah. That includes your Christian walk. Yeah. If you're thinking of the world, and you're thinking of God, and then you're thinking of the world, and you're thinking of God, you're double-minded. I love Jesus. I'm not real sure there is a God. I love Jesus today, but tomorrow I just don't really know. Why would he allow all this to happen? Doubt. I, I am so scared right now. I am just so scared. I am so scared. Oh, God's not a fear. I'm unstable in all my ways. I'm unstable in all of my ways. I, I'm thrown back and forth and back and forth into my Christian walk. How many would say, you know what, that's me, p -bob. I do that. Don't even have to raise your hands. I'm just saying in your own minds, think about that just for a second. If you're unstable in one thing, you're unstable in all of it. If you're following the world and, and, and so on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and you're following God on Friday and Tuesday, guess what? You're double-minded, and you're unstable in all of your ways. Say it. Don't follow worldly desires. Follow godly desires. Live by James 1. Live what the Word says. Eat the Word. The Word is alive. What God says to us, the Word is alive. If it's alive and it's living, that means there's going to be something in here that is going to tell you how to live your life. Amen. Amen. It's an instruction manual. How do I know that? Because I, I had 14 years of college... And all of the professors told me that that's what it said, so that's what I believe. No. I read it. Been there, done that. Played that game. You can't live in two worlds and call yourself a full-fledged believer in Jesus. And my, my whole thing is this. is I, I sit and I wonder and I, 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 I ponder on this constantly. I sit and I look at my office and I'm like, Lord, 
please give me some word that's going to challenge them to get this. Please give me something more, Jesus, that they follow the cross of Christ rather than their own fleshly desires. Lord, give me something more, Jesus, in this word, whether it be out of the word, whether it be out of the New Living Translation, the King James Version, the message, whatever it is, give me something, Lord God, that will challenge them that they don't go out and do things that they're not supposed to. Lord God, please give me something to challenge them, to get them to the point that they're not going to live in two worlds, that they're not going to follow two masters. That's my prayer. I thought about tonight about bringing out these little stupid little framed pieces of paper that call myself a pastor and bringing them up here and setting them on the altar and going, they mean nothing, you guys. It's just a piece of paper. I'm not going to get in front of God and God go, oh, he's a pastor. No, this is what it's going to You know what the word says about pastors? That I'm held more accountable. Read it for yourself. If if, if, if I don't get bring somebody to Jesus that I'm supposed to witness to, if I don't preach what I'm supposed to preach, I'm held accountable for your soul. Each and every person that walks through those doors, I am accountable for. That's right. I, it's my job to get you to, to focus on what the Word said. It's my job to get you to start praying. It's my job to get you delivered. It's my job to get you to focus on Jesus Christ. It's my job to get you to focus on the cross and not your own fleshly desires. And most of you have, have followed your fleshly desires so long that it's going to be so hard to break. And we're coming to a day where it's going to get harder and harder and more difficult to follow Christ. Somebody would say, P-Bob, I feel the pressure you're talking about. That's me. I get what you're saying, P-Bob, and I really want to do better. But I don't know how. Join the club. All I have is basic Christianity. Pray like you've never prayed before. Read your word like you've never read the word before. Hit your knees like you've never hit your knees before. Seek after God like you've never sought after anything in your whole entire life. What do you got to lose? Nothing. I've been doing this for 10 years. And I got to tell you, we are in perilous times. We are in difficult times. Because of the president. No, it has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with the devil's on a rampage and he's not hiding anymore. Because God's coming back. And the devil's trying to take down as many people as he possibly can. And if you don't believe in the devil, you're pretty stupid because he's out there and he's lied to most of you pretty in depth. And it's only a couple of words that he tells you and you guys go running like a bunch of fishermen finding out that the trout's down the stream and you're the only one that could catch them. Yeah. I don't know if that made any sense at all, but you got the point. <laughs> <laughs> Did it make sense? You got it, right? Okay. Somebody got it. One person in the front row got it. I got one more, Rob. A little one? I got one more. Matthew 16, 25 to 27. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in the glory of his Father and will judge all people according to their deeds. You know what that says to me? It says this. No matter what the devil lies to me about that I can have, it's not worth it. No matter what he tells me can happen in my life, to lose my soul is not worth it. There's no 
but I'm not talking about me at this point. I'm talking to some of you guys that are single, some of you girls that are single. It's not worth any guy, any girl. It's not worth any drug that's out there. It's not worth any high. It's not worth any low. It's not worth anything for you to gain the whole world and lose your soul. Amen. Amen. It's not worth anything. Last part I want to share with you. I bought a brand new album last week. I don't know if you guys remember Creed. You guys remember Creed? Yeah. 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 Scott Stamp's got a brand new album out. Scott Stamp was a young man who his dad would send into his room and write Bible scriptures down every time he made a mistake in his life. Every time he made a mistake, he would send him up to his room and tell him to write whole chapters of the Bible as a punishment. As a punishment. And Scott Stapp said, I turned so far away from God, I wanted nothing to do with this Jesus. It was nothing but an insult to me to even to call on God. And the whole time over the years and all of his interviews, I would listen and I would watch him. Because I saw a glimpse of Jesus inside of there. This new album is all about, I had it all. I gained everything. This world gave me everything I needed. I had all the girls, I had all the money, I had all the drugs. I had everything that I could want, anything at the tip of my finger I could have. But it meant nothing. All of my roots came back in. Now I saw what my dad was trying to do. And, it, and I, I'm, making some, I'm not making it up, but I'm telling you what I read from the album and the lyrics. The lyrics were saying, I'm glad my dad did that for me. I'm glad my father, my my." earthly father showed me who God is. And I think it's interesting over, you can watch this for yourself. Pre broke up. <coughs> Solo projects were, you know, typical rock band stuff. Solo projects were all over the place. Alter Bridge and all this kind of stuff. When Creed got back together, they made friends with one another. And the one album that I will never forget, there's a song called Rain. And all of the members of Creed are giving the devil a sign. And Scott Stapp is sitting there in all of his glory. And he's gone. And I hate this symbol. But I'm going to do it just to prove to you what, what he, he's like. All the band members are doing that. Which is, you know, the rock sign, the devil horns, and all this kind of stuff. And Scott Stapp does this. And he's like, no way. <coughs> he got the truth and he understood it. A rock star who rocked the world understood who Jesus was. There's still hope for all of us. Amen. There's still hope for each and every one of us. God has not given up on you. God will never quit on you. God will never, ever stop loving you. God loves you no matter what you're going through, no matter who you are, no matter what sin you think is too big for God, no matter what you've ever done, no matter how many times you've blasphemed God, no matter how many times you've yelled out and, and flipped God off in the sky, God still loves you. God still cares for you. All you've got to say is, hey God, I'm sorry, and turn back to Him. We're coming to a point in this world where it's coming to an end, and you're either going to be on its team or you're not. There's no cut and dry. You know where you're at with God. You know what you struggle with. You know what needs to be given to God. Just like the little five-year-old kid who his little voice in his head, don't steal that. You knew it was wrong before mom told you. You all know the things that you need to get rid of. Each and every person under the sound of my voice has that little ringing in the back of their head that says, don't do that. Don't do that. It's just God telling you, hey, I love you. And I don't want to see you make mistakes that are going to pull you further down. And don't listen to the devil's lies. Even if it's just one word. The challenge for you tonight is to, is to live by James 1. And to realize that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God comes to give life and give it more abundantly. My challenge tonight is, at the end of this year, for all of us, to be true born again Christians hey. and to be, yell, be able to yell out like in Nick's, Nick, Nick's thing that he had over the last couple of weeks. I am a Christian and I will stand up for everything that God has given me. I am such a blessed guy and I go through as many problems as you guys go through 
But I gotta tell you, a few years back, I was having a really tough time. I'm gonna close with this. I was having a really tough time witnessing to my family of who God was. I was having a really tough time of explaining how my addictions pulled me down into the pits of hell. I was having a really tough time getting my parents to understand that you needed to be born again because they're, they've been in church their whole life and didn't understand that they needed to make that commitment. I got to go home to camp for Thanksgiving a, a, about a week ago. I got to go on Sunday morning and watch my sister play drums for Jesus. And I got to watch her up there feeling the Spirit of the Lord. And I got to watch her lift up her hands and worship God. I'm a blessed man. I get to watch my parents be on the church board. I'm a blessed man. I get to watch my son stand up here and preach. I'm a blessed man. I get to watch my wife stand up here and preach. I get to, I get to see you guys rock your socks off. Watch me drop drumsticks every week. <laughs> I love Jesus. And I want you guys to understand that's all I've ever tried to do is take a little piece of paper that sits on my wall and go, you guys need Jesus. You need to stop living double lives. You need to stop trying to fool God. You need to stop trying to run from God and just give Him all. you got nothing to lose. I am in the best part of my life. I love Jesus. Challenge is on. And this altar is open. Amen? Amen. Amen. I love you guys. Let's close in prayer. Lord God, I ask that you uh, make people's heart, hearts just beat really fast right now. Lord God, I ask for conviction because that's what it is for me, Lord God. When my heart beats really fast, you're speaking to us. Lord God, I ask for somebody in this house, Lord God, to accept the challenge, accept the responsibility that they have to seek out and to live as James pleaded for us to live. I ask, Lord God, that you um, would just speak to somebody's heart tonight, Lord God, that they would give their hearts to you for the first time or the 50th time. And I ask you to speak to them, Lord God, in their beds tonight. And I ask, Lord God, that we would just become sold out, that we could yell out, I am a Christian and nothing is going to pull me away. But I am a believer in the living God and nothing is going to make me doubt of who Jesus Christ is and what he has done for me. I'm a Christian, and I believe that everything that he wrote in his word is true, that nothing is going to pull me away, that I no longer want to live double-minded, but I want to live totally sold out for only one God, for only one King, for only one Lord, and that's Jesus Christ. Touch some hearts tonight, Lord God. Change some minds tonight. I get rid of doubt and witchcraft in Jesus' name right now, and I bind your hands. I bind the, the great deceiver right now in Jesus' name. The psalter is open. Not, not right now, Tony. Okay.